Okay, folks, that's all I have this evening. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Yes, sir. Can you describe what exactly entails isolation? So the question is, what entails isolation? Well, the ideal situation is where they are completely away from any contact with any other horses. So they can't be in just a, a, a barn or a cross a fence or anything like that. That's not isolation. So they have to be completely away from any contact. And basically, if you can keep them 30 to 40 feet away so they can't be sneezing and blowing particles on them. But the wind is going to help you out if you're outdoors, that sort of thing. So completely isolated in that sense. When you go through and you're cleaning the stable, that's the last stall you do. And you, you use separate tools on that one, and you wear gloves, and those sort of things to prevent any possible spread. So they're the very last one that gets dealt with. They have their own um, stall mucking tools, buckets, forks, etc. Their own buckets, everything. Nothing gets shared, no commingling. You reduce the amount of people that go through. Only one person goes in there a day. Those sort of things as far as to really just, just isolate them from complete exposure to anything. Yes, ma'am. Bovine spread. How long, just a general idea, how long is that, that virus viable after you've made the So the question is, as far as when we look at fomite spread, how long is the virus viable in the environment? It's an envelope virus, so we look at probably no more than th 21 days would be the maximum that it could survive. But it's going to probably be potentially a week to two weeks that it could potentially survive in the environment. But it doesn't like being out in the sun and, and drying. Those sort of things are going to be tough on it. But it may very light, unlikely that it will live up to 21 days. But it can live for a few days in the environment. So you have to be really cautious in that sense. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So the question is, as far as with the different viruses, does it mean that donkeys and mules may be more susceptible to the neurologic form? Or? Right, that's typically the ones that affect them, but they can get one as well as far as the mules and donkeys, so. Yes, ma'am. Do you know what the latest update is actually on what's going on in Oregon? As Dr. Okay. Don Hansen can answer that as far as the most recent update. I mean, I read on the web page this morning that there were two cases in Oregon, and there is rumors going rampant, of course, in Corvallis, that there is a barn in Corvallis that is quarantined. Just to say the strain on your necks. <laughs> I figured you would. Uh, let me just take a minute. I'll bring everybody up to speed on where we are. Thank you. Uh, from, my pers from my position as your state veterinarian, uh, we have, as far as we know, and if you guys know other people, please call us and tell us. As far as we know, as we speak, we have under direct control of local veterinarians and local quarantines every single horse from Oregon that was in that show. Locked up and all their stable mates. So there's 20 of those guys and there's 200 stable mates. And they're all locked up and isolated. Not going any place, nobody's coming and going, horses aren't coming and going. So that's fact number one. Now, two, how many cases? We have two, period. Uh, and each day, at the close of each day, or the beginning of another, we could add to it. But as this afternoon, at noon, that was the last report that we made, and we, we try to keep our, we will keep our website current. As to noon every single day. So if you're curious of what, what we think is real, go up to the Oregon Department of Agriculture Animal Health Division website, click on herpes virus in horses, and, we will, and you'll see. So as of noon today, there were two cases. Don, maybe you should define what you mean by two cases. Okay, thank you. Because what we have are two horses that spiked a fever and were subsequently tested positive 
with this magic real-time PCR with the variant strain that we're talking about being recognized by that. And, and so they are EHV1 cases because they're not showing any signs of, of uh, neurological distress at this point. Thank you, because I, just, I use that too casually. That. So that's where we are. Now, uh, you guys, you're hearing rumors like I'm hearing rumors, and I will tell you a little wake up call for me, the, the old fart in the room, and that is Facebook is faster than I could ever imagine. <laughs> <laughs> ever imagine. Here's what happened, actually happened to us. On our very first case, we, we met and we consulted and we talked with the lab and we agreed we had a, a declaration. We're going to declare a horse positive. I told my crew, my permit clerks and office manager, we have a positive horse, so if anybody asks, we'll, quote, we'll post it. But if anybody asks, tell them. Within five minutes, a veterinarian, cool guy, called and said, oh, by the way, what's going on? My permit clerk says, well, we just declared our first case. 20 minutes later, I'm talking to reporters. They had the story <laughs> off of uh, Facebook. Okay, so I'm not complaining. That's just a reality check for me. I said, oh, okay, everything I say in this room, I got 20 minutes. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Uh, it, it's, it's good and it's bad. The bad side is what kind of things I cannot tell you how many times we have told people who called us that our border's not closed. Thank you. Now, our border's not closed. Our border, and no state's border is closed. The other fact I can tell you is that we have met three times with all the state veterinarians in the western United States. Three times on conference calls. And we are in solid agreement that if anybody is inclined to change their rules, as in, I've got to close my borders, I'm going to cancel shows, anything, that they will let us know. As of my walking out of the office at 5 10 to try to come here and get here on time, no state had any border closed. No state was sh shutting down a show. And everybody's reacting like, we are. Their state veterinarians are all us. We're watching, we're seeing, we're giving advice, and, and seeing how it progresses. Okay, I think that's. I think I told you. I'm going to give you some, the, the latest. Who? No kind of <laughs> On all the states, in at this moment as we speak, there are 450 horses that are isolated in 13 western states from that show. Okay, so that's the number. Associated with those little honeys are 800 of their buddies, just like Oregon. Okay, we have 20, we have nearly 200 buddies. All together, so far, officially confirmed diagnosis death are seven. In all kinds of states, and none in Oregon. There's one in Arizona, one in California, one in California, as opposed to the ten in my heard. Two in Idaho, and one in New Mexico. All the confirmed cases, now we're talking about cases of EHM, this neurotropic form, or neurological form, there have been 12. So I'm just giving these numbers, just think about it. 412, et cetera.